This video is brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. Offering a wide range of reagents and materials, Thermo Fisher supports virtually every laboratory application, from research to drug discovery and development to manufacturing. With over 80,000 laboratory chemicals now on one site, Thermo Fisher delivers choice, quality, and supply assurance for all your chemical needs. Visit the link below for more information. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We learned all about acids and bases in the general chemistry series, and we also learned about the concept of an acid-base titration. This is a neutralization reaction where we use an acid or base of known concentration to determine the concentration of the other reagent. This is because we can find the stoichiometric amount of acid or base titrant that must be used to precisely neutralize the analyte, and then use the volume of titrant added to calculate the concentration of the analyte. For example, one mole of hydrochloric acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide to produce one mole of sodium chloride and one mole of water. Knowing the number of moles we add of one substance tells us something about the number of moles of the other substance initially present. The point at which the number of moles of acid and base precisely neutralize one another is called the equivalence point. To get to this point, you have to slowly add your acid or base, little by little, until the reagents are exhausted, thus leaving only water and salt. We have already gone over titration calculations in lecture-based tutorials, so that will not be the focus here, although we will discuss these calculations in a general way. Rather than actually performing stoichiometric calculations, we are going to focus on the details of physically performing the titration, which should help make any relevant calculations easier to do. For example, we have already learned that to get to the equivalence point of a titration between a strong acid and base, like HCl and NaOH, we can measure the pH until we reach a pH of 7, since precisely equimolar amounts of strong acid and strong base will leave only salt and water, which gives us neutral pH. But rather than measuring pH, what we normally use in chemistry labs when performing titrations is an indicator. An indicator is a substance that exhibits a visible color change once the titration reaches its equivalence point. For many acid-base titrations, a common indicator will be phenolphthalein. This is because it turns bright pink as the solution is changing from acidic to basic, as upon having just neutralized all the acid, any additional base will react with phenolphthalein instead, and it is the deprotonated form that glows pink, so as soon as we see this color persist in solution, we'll know that we're at the equivalence point. So to summarize, we start with an acid, we can add a bit of the indicator, and then titrate with a base. Again, the solution will stay clear until it suddenly turns pink at the equivalence point, notifying us that the titration is complete, and allowing us to do our calculations. Today we will be using titration to find the concentration of a hydrochloric acid solution by using 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide as the titrant. To start, we'll need a ring stand fixed with a burette clamp, an Erlenmeyer flask, a burette, a beaker, a glass funnel, our acid and our base, some indicator, and a graduated cylinder. First, let's assemble our titration setup. We'll add our clean burette to the ring stand and clamp. This is where we'll add our base, which again is referred to as the titrant in this case. Our acid will go in an Erlenmeyer flask below the burette. This is our analyte. Before adding base to the burette, let's make sure it works correctly. We can add water on top using a funnel. The burette can be tall, so you might need to lower it or step up on something. Sometimes the stopcock leaks, and you don't want your base to leak out, as that will affect your calculation, so that's why we start with water. After you see that there are no leaks, turn the stopcock parallel to the burette to open it, making sure it is not clogged. After you ensure that water flows well, remove all the water and close the stopcock. Next we're going to load up our base, making sure that we are wearing safety goggles and gloves as we are using corrosive chemicals. Let's fill the burette all the way to the top using a funnel. In your lab notebook, note the starting volume reading on the burette. Remember to read from the bottom of the meniscus and record it to the appropriate number of significant figures. 
Now let's put our acid in the flask and place this directly below the burette. In this experiment, we are using 20 milliliters of HCl solution, but again, we don't know the concentration. Let's also add a few drops of the indicator. We're now ready for the titration. We will start with what we call a rough titration or quick and dirty titration. This is a quick run to get an idea of where our equivalence point will be. This rough titration saves a lot of time, but it is not very accurate, so we won't use this data in our results. To do this, let's open the burette and let the base go down quickly as you swirl the flask, which could also be stirred with a magnetic stir bar if you desire. You'll stop every now and then to check if there's a color change that's persistent. When you see this persistent change, you will know that you have reached the equivalence point. Record the end volume reading on the burette and subtract that from the initial reading to get the volume added. This volume is an estimate of how much it will take to reach the equivalence point. But because we poured very quickly, we have most likely added a bit more than was needed. The next titration will be more accurate. Since we have an idea of how much base we need, we can quickly add about three quarters of the volume we recorded from the rough titration. We know that we won't get to the equivalence point with this amount. But after that, we have to be more careful. A safe approach is to add a half a milliliter at a time, but you can go as slowly as one drop at a time. After you add half a milliliter, you'll swirl and see if there is a color change. When the base drops into the acid, you may see some fleeting color change right when the drop enters, but it doesn't stay like that when you mix the solution, which means the equivalence point has not been reached. We need a color change that remains even after mixing. Keep adding, mixing, and checking. It is important to be careful when we're close, as we don't want to miss the equivalence point by adding too much. As you can see, this pink color is not changing anymore, so we are at the equivalence point. Record the final volume reading on the burette and get the difference from the first reading. As we already know, the volume of base added, multiplied by its concentration, over the volume of acid will give us the concentration of our acid. In this type of experiment, we generally perform three titrations for our concentration determination to be more accurate. The average of the three numbers will give us a solid estimate for the concentration of the acid analyte. Titration certainly gets much more complicated than this, even simply by utilizing a weak acid or base as either the titrant or analyte, which will change the pH of the equivalence point and therefore the indicator that is used. There are also several other types of titrations, such as redox titrations. But for now, we have covered the most basic titration setup, so that we have a firm grasp of how to do this type of analytical chemistry. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.